Hello, everybody. Welcome along to this very special preview show. We are looking forward to PEW Jubilee. It's all going down Saturday, the 4th of June in Shottery Memorial Hall in Stratford-upon-Avon. I'm Dave Bradshaw, and joining me is my fellow uh, commentator, but a man I haven't seen for a little while, Pete Andrews. Pete, you're back from suspense. I'm back. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, I got suspended. Got involved where I probably shouldn't have been. That old wrestler mentality hit for a few seconds, and the bet, you know, a bit of a uh, bit of personal history and whatnot with prestige. I shouldn't have done it. I've learned my lesson. I'm back at the commentary desk uh, at Jubilee. Looking forward to it. Huge show to come back for. So yeah, exciting stuff. Okay, well, I'm sure we're going to talk a little bit about prestige later on. One of the people we're going to mm. be by today is Ry the Sound Guy, who of course has that career make or break match against Chris. He does. Uh, on June 4th. So we'll talk about that in a little bit more detail. We've got uh, guests coming from across the PEW roster. We're going to be talking to Mia Cortez about her latest battle with Alfie, this time in the quarterfinals of the Fallen Angel Championship Tournament. That's coming up in a little while. Uh, there's the Jubilee Street Fight. Tyler Adams and Jason Joshua mm. here from both men as they prepare for that. Uh, and of course, by the way, there is this slight issue with, with uh, to put it mildly, of this new faction that seems to be prepared to dominate PEW, the entitled, well, we're going to be hearing from Riley Nova ahead of his uh, participation in a six-person tag match at Jubilee about exactly what the intentions are of the entitled. So it's going to be a pretty uh, busy show. Yeah, I missed one show. We've got new factions, new feuds. It's, yeah, crazy stuff. Life moves very fast in the wrestling business. Certainly does. And uh, besides that, we're also going to talk about every other match on the uh, on the card for Jubilee and a few other bits as well. So uh, our first guest is on his way in just a moment. So let's get going. All right. First match we're going to talk about up for Jubilee is this Jubilee street fight. It is a feud that has become deeply personal between Jason Joshua and the man who joins us now, Tyler Adams. And Tyler, it's you, isn't it, who made it personal? I didn't make it personal. I just, I, I do what I want to do. Whatever I want to do, I'll do it. It's a, like, it's not, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. I just, I don't, I mean, we, I don't want to re rehearse arguments we had when you were on commentary with us, but this, it just seems to me, why do you think that you can do whatever you want? You just say it like that's just a given. That you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. And I mean, if everyone did that, the world would be chaos. So why can you just go about doing whatever you like? But it did do what I wanted to because nobody stopped me. Not yet, but that's not yet. Right? Did mean, you stop me from getting up and getting on this on the apron? It's not from. I mean, I'm not going to try it, but I'm, I'm not a trained wrestler. But Jason Joshua is, and next time you next time you face him, it's not going to be a sneak attack. You're not going to be able to hit him with a backcracker from behind. It's going to be one. -on -one. There's going to be no rules. A street fight, June the fourth in Stratford upon Avon. I mean, are you that confident that when it's a fair fight? That you can take him. Oh, I'm confident, and I, like I said, I I know the consequences of my own actions. So I know going into it, I am gonna fight. But that's what I wanted. I'm not. I'm not talking about him and jumping from behind for for nothing to have no consequences. I know what I'm gonna do. You're watching this. What, I mean, you were sort of pretty supportive of Tyler when he was on commentary with us. Um, I think I, yeah, I think you should be supportive. I mean, he's hell of a talent and he's been left off shows and, you know, that's not necessarily fair for someone of his caliber. Whereas other people are getting opportunity after opportunity. I can, I get it. I get why he wanted to make a statement and it was a statement made and he's got what he wanted. And I think you're going to see someone earn their spot that they, you know, they, they rightfully deserve. And being left off a poster, the poster too. Like my face is made for a poster. Jason Joshua's is not. I mean, even that, that's an arrogant thing to say. Surely you can hear yourself saying that. And, and it's not arrogance, it's confidence. I mean, you can back it up. Okay, well, Pete, you've seen plenty of street fights in your time working in, in pro wrestling. What, what do you I have is here? I mean, you know, it's an entirely different situation to a regular wrestling match. Tyler seems extremely confident that he's going to pick up the win. But, but if you're Jason Joshua, you're coming in here against someone who, well, you really need to keep your emotions in check because I'm sure Jason is going to come into this really wanting to just unleash a beating on Tyler here. But how's he going to, how's he got to do it? What's his strategy got to be if you're Jason Joshua? 
Well, obviously, we're going to speak to him later. And we've seen messages he's been leaving on Twitter about bringing in tables, bringing in plunder to the match. You know, that is part of the thing with a, a street fight. But, you have you know, you've got an opponent against you that has something to prove. He's got a chip on his shoulder. And that's going to make him more dangerous. So it's going to be a very interesting match. Obviously, we've had street fights in PW before. And we saw how that ended. I think this is going to be another level of that with, with so much to prove. And... You know, people want to make names for themselves. They want to prove that they are the, the marquee players and be on the posters and be in the main events. And, you know, this is this is a good, good chance for everyone to see that. Tyler, presumably this is all part of a larger plan, right? So what's uh, what's next? You know, if, if everything goes to plan, and I don't think that's a given, but if you beat Jason Joshua on June 4th, what next? Like, what 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 is that a stepping stone to for you in your PEW career? What do you mean? It's, it's You don't think it's going to be a given? Well, I think Jason Joshua, like, you're a very talented competitor, but so is he. I think it's going to be a very even fight. You've got just as much. That's quite like a backhanded compliment. <laughs> yeah, like, look, you, I, you, you may be, win the fight, but I, you may I, lose I, it. I don't need to do a backhanded compliment. I don't like you, I don't like you. So don't give me like a backhanded compliment. Okay, well, I'll put it in more frank terms. You might lose. What happens if you lose? I won't lose. Okay, well, what happens if you win? What's next? Jason Joshua, he is so emotional right now and he's so bothered. I'm chilled. I am so chilled. I lie in bed and I'm record to speak to him. So, That's how I am. So you're saying you're in his head. Is that what you're saying? <sighs> Do you want to put the words in my mouth? Well, I'm trying to make sense of what you're saying here. Because there's a lot of comments. I want to through anybody that I want to. I told you I'd do what I want. <clears throat> so if I want to go for anybody, I will. All right. Well, we'll see. Pete, what, what's your prediction? Do you think Tyler's going to have a good day on June 4th? I think he's going to have a very good day. I think he's going to prove a lot of the doubt is wrong. You know, these, these videos he's done on Twitter, I get it. I get it. He's getting into the head of Jason Joshua, and especially in a dangerous match like a street fight. If someone's in your head, that's when you make mistakes, and you can't afford to make mistakes in a match like that. So it's exciting. It's one of the matches I'm really excited to see. It's, it's a, a big match, big stakes. So, yeah, exciting stuff. Are you going to say something completely different when Jason Joshua's with us later? You, when I ask you who's going to win it then, are you going to say him? That's very unlike me, Dave. You know this. All right. Well, we'll see. Well, Tyler Adams, we wish you... Uh... All the best. I hope your uh, attitude improves slightly, but most of all, I hope you get out unscathed and uh, perhaps can uh, can learn something from your experience on June 4th. Wish me all the best in my first ever street fight. And we know that um, Jason Joshua knows nothing about me. He's got nothing to watch. He doesn't know what I'm capable of. But he's stupid enough to put a video on Twitter. I, I know what he's going to do. This is stupidity now. All right. Well, we'll find out shortly. Tyler, I'm sure you're a busy man. You've got lots of sleeping to do. We know you like to spend a lot of time in bed from the videos that we've seen you in. So we'll let you go and we will see you. Very successful outside of wrestling and in wrestling, but thank you for your concern. Oh, you're very welcome. We will see you June 4th, Jubilee, for a Jubilee street fight. Tyler Adams against Jason Joshua. Right, now another one of the matches on the card at PEW Jubilee on 4th of June is a particularly interesting one if you're a fan of Eddie Ryan. Ryan, of course, a veteran of the UK scene, but he's got, I think, a pretty difficult challenge on his hands uh, at Jubilee. He's going to be facing a man who had already proven to be a very destructive force here in phenomenal elite wrestling, but of course he has become even more dangerous now. He has aligned himself with this new group, the Entitled. I'm talking about Jim Diehard. Now, Pete, do you think that uh, Eddie Ryan is walking into a pretty dangerous situation in Stratford-upon-Avon? I don't think it could be any more dangerous for him, to be honest. We've seen Diehard absolutely dominate. Even in kind of losses, he still dominated those matches he's been in. He's absolutely destroyed poor Riot the last show. You know, he he's a man that needs absolutely no backup to uh, cause damage and destruction and win matches. But now as part of the entitled, uh, he's got backup and that makes him even more dangerous. Um, I do wonder, we'll, we'll get on in a second to why it might be that he's joined the entitled. But one thing I think we maybe forget a little bit about Jim Diehold, it's easy to forget given everything that's happened since, is that it's only two shows ago that he was expecting to have a, a basically a coronation without having to fight and to become the first ever PEW world champion. That was what our 
general manager Jesse Maria wanted to do when his two scheduled opponents in that inaugural title match were unable to compete. Of course, we know what happened later that night. Callum Newman came out and said, no, you're going to have to fight if you want to be a champion. So suddenly he was having a match rather than just being given the title. Then that match became a three-way when Martin Kirby cashed in his golden ticket and won the title. So it's almost as though Jim Diehard sort of became the forgotten man in all of that equation. Uh, And for a man who's prone to anger Mm. uh, on the best of days, that won't have sat very well. And I, I wonder whether that may be why he's chosen to get some some of that backup you were talking about. Yeah, definitely. Well, the name fits, entitled. And, you know, Die Hard feels he is entitled. He is. He should be uh, the champion. And he feels he's uncrowned. You know, it, it was that close. It was in his hands and it got taken away from him. And he feels like he's entitled to be on the top of the mountain. Yes, now he is aligned with the champion himself in Kirby. Um so, yeah, that's an interesting thing as well, because, you know, he was that close to being the champion. Now he's aligned with him and backing up the champ. You know, in the back of Die Hard's mind, is there, well, that should be mine. Is Could there be, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer type situation between the two? But, yeah, an angry Jim Die Hard is not something to be taken lightly. I mean, having said that, Eddie Ryan isn't someone to be taken lightly either. Oh, completely not, no. We've only seen him once in, uh, in PEW so far. It was an internet title match, uh, Kings of Combat against H. Hood. Uh, a match that he didn't win, but I think we can, well, you might not agree, because I know you're a big <laughs> Hood fan, but that it was uh, controversial circumstances in, in which Hood was able to to win the match. So I don't think there's any um, any reason to believe from that defeat that Eddie Ryan is any less of a of a competitor. So he's going to be a challenge for Jim Diehard as well. And in fact, I, I wonder, just as it is a, a potential uh, opportunity to climb up that, that sort of contender's ladder again for Jim Diehard, same is true for for Eddie Ryan as well. So actually, the, the implications of who wins this one uh, could be pretty important in the world title scene. Oh, most definitely. I mean, neither man would seem out of place uh, gunning for that championship. Both both competitors, you could see having that gold around their waist at some point in their careers. Uh, and Ryan, he, he's one of the best that uh, the UK has to offer. He's He's been around, he's seen it all, and he's done it all. And, uh, you know, he won't be taking uh, Die Hard lightly. He knows what he's getting involved in, but he's he's a hell of a competitor himself, a fierce competitor. These are two hard-hitting wrestlers. You're going to uh, hear some big, meaty slaps in this match, no doubt, uh, and the fans in attendance room for a treat. Is there anyone who can stop Jim Die Hard, given that he's already, as we've said, the, the powerhouse that he is? But now, like, like you mentioned, Martin Kirby, Riley Nova, Brady Phillips, Ivy, all of them combined together uh, for a guy who was already pretty hard to beat. It, mm. If they choose to get involved, and unfortunately, given their track record so far, there's reason to believe that they that they well might, um, then that stacks the odds against anyone, not Steady Ryan in that situation, beyond any kind of reasonable expectation that they that they could overcome those, right? Completely. They're, they're a unit. They've come together for one reason, and that's to dominate PW and the rest of the UK scene. They're not going to take any prisoners. And even if uh, the entire don't get involved, in the back of Ryan's head, he's going to be thinking, are they going to get involved? So he's going to have to uh, keep looking over his shoulder in that match. So Die Hard, he's got maybe the power advantage. He's also maybe got the mental advantage for this. All right. Well, we'll find out. It's, uh, we don't have long to wait now, of course, during the fourth uh, drawing ever closer, PEW Jubilee, where it will be Jim Diehard against Eddie Ryan. All right, well, Pete, one of the things you missed when you were suspended on our last show, foregone conclusion at the end of April, was the beginning of a very special tournament, the Fallen Angel Championship Tournament in memory of the late, great Nancy Benoit. First two quarterfinals happened on that show. The second two uh, will take place at Jubilee on June the 4th, and one of the competitors in one of those quarterfinals is joining us now. Mia Cortez has taken a break from uh, an intense training session in Milton Keynes tonight to join us. How are you doing, Mia? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, more importantly, how are you? Obviously, you're training hard because you're. we've had to just uh, pull you away just to come and talk to us for, for a few minutes. Another match for you against Alfie after that incredibly intense street fight a couple of months ago. Um, this time not under street fight rules, but the stakes are high in a very different way because it's, as we said, part of, of this Fallen Angel Championship tournament. So what are your thoughts headed into the match? 
Oh, I'm very excited. Obviously, um, it's time to step up our game. Me and the Dragons are formulating some ideas, some plans of action, battle strategies, as they say. Um, I mean, I've had a few matches with Alfie now. And as we know, we do go toe-to-toe. We used to be friends until uh, she assaulted me after a match for no reason. I accidentally, well, it's not for no reason. I accidentally did knock her off the apron, but it was an accident. Friendships don't last these days. So, yeah, we'll be going to war again, and uh, I'm very excited, and it's uh, time to step up the battle. Do you think, given that you won the street fight, and congratulations, by the way, but do you think do you think that, you know, Alfie already, because you two don't like each other, and that's been, that's been clear from the street fight and from uh, turning against you, as you said, uh, do you think she's going to be even more motivated to even things up, given what happened in that street fight? Will, will she be an even tougher opponent in this quarterfinal? Oh, hands down. Yeah, she is raging, raging. She thought she had that in the bag. There was She had that chain in that bear. Sneaky. But I suppose all goes in a street fight. But yeah, she is going to come back and she is going to try and bring the fire. But obviously I'm a dragon, so I can handle the heat. And uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely think she is coming back with a vengeance. So um, who knows? We'll see what she pulls out of the bag. You're at ringside for that uh, for the street fight. You weren't you weren't here, obviously, for the uh, the other two quarterfinals uh, at foregone conclusion. But you've seen Mia against Alfie mm. up. Uh, what are your thoughts heading into this? And have you got any questions for Mia? Well, yeah, that was yeah, you know, like Dave said, that street fight was incredible. And to be so close to it, I was I was a bit worried for our safety at some point. She was spilling out, you were going all over the place. But yeah, hell of a match. Congratulations on the victory. Um, you. and you said obviously you guys used to be friends on our first show, you were teaming up. And there's there's you know, there's a couple of things you can make in wrestling. You can make friends or you can make money. So I get why, you know. The, the dissension happens and I think it's it's benefited you as well you managed to step up you won that street fight and you showed sort of how tough you can be um so I, th- I think it's going to benefit both of you but like you know she's coming for you now you've got that big win over her she's you know you could see she felt embarrassed she went in there with this game plan hidden weapons whatnot and uh, she still didn't win. So, yeah, I, if I were you, I would definitely, you know, bring your A game as well because she's going to want to prove something, especially in the tournament that's, you know, so big and so important, not just oh, for you know, the company for wrestling as a whole. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, exciting stuff this match. Another big, big match. Yeah, I'm so looking forward to it. I actually can't wait. I mean, I, I think it, it speaks to how seriously everyone's taking this tournament. We've actually struggled to get any of the four of you who are in these uh, third and fourth quarterfinals to to take any time off from training to talk to us. Alfie mm. uh, didn't respond to our, our request. L.A. Taylor and Ronnie Knox are the two competing in the other quarterfinal. And if you were to defeat Alfie, you would face the winner of that match uh, in the semifinal. So, Mia, what do you know about L.A. Taylor, Ronnie Knox? And do you have a preference? Who would you rather face in the semis if you got there? Oh, do you know what? I, I've, had, I've had a couple of interactions with both girls. Uh, both hard as nails um, but you know what I like a challenge and I've, been, I've watched LA Taylor and she's a big strong girl so yeah I'd quite like to face LA Taylor that would be quite fun uh, see how far I stand with a big strong girl like that I mean I'm not, I'm not the biggest I'm not the strongest but these dragons and this personality. I mean, we can show how uh, how loud we can really roar. Can you give us any insight into what advice the dragons have given you? Well, the secret. It depends on which dragon you ask. I mean, the red dragon is telling me not to be a whelp, which is a baby dragon for all those who don't know. Um, I mean, but they don't have to do the work. I have to do the work. They all seem to forget this. Like, I've been told to do this, do that. Don't be a baby. And this just sometimes I have to just be like, right, just, just take a little bit from all of them. So then they all quieten down and we can actually formulate a plan. Otherwise, they're squabbling like children. Uh, so um, yeah. until until the day, we'll, yeah. uh, we'll, just, we'll just let them brainstorm as it is i was about to say pete you're looking slightly uh, puzzled by all this talk of, of dragons you're right 
No, no, I, I like it. I'm, I was thinking maybe a new commentary partner for me, one of the dragons. That'd be good. Stop oh. trying to replace me. Why are you you're always I think there's an opening. <laughs> they, do you know what? They would love to. They they love the fame. They love they there love being in the spotlight, those dragons. So, you know, we can make that happen. Just there you go, Dave. know which dragon you'd like. We've got a couple of new dragons coming in as well. There you go. Okay. I'm looking forward to meeting them. Maybe we yeah. could have like we could have like a set. You know how there's like you know some places have like a German announce table. We could have like a dragon announce table. Yes. Separately. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> that would be nice. Uh, right. While we've got you, Mia, let's uh, talk. Go back to the tournament here briefly and talk about the other half of the bracket because there's some interesting developments there. Uh, we we know that Mariah May and uh, Ruby Radley won their quarterfinals at foreground conclusion, but unfortunately, Mariah May has had to now pull out of the tournament. So Ruby Radley at the moment is left without a semi-final opponent. But as we understand it, she is going to find out the identity of her new semi-final opponent on uh, what we call it, Getting Mortal with Ryan. Ryan Taylor from Geordie Shaw, who joined us at Kings of Combat. We had some interesting exchanges, Pete, didn't we, with him at the commentary table? And he, yeah, we did, yeah. Yeah, you, you got on with him more than I did. Um, He's a great guy. Yeah, knows his stuff. Again, great oh. commentary partner. Yeah, You can always count on a Geordie to liven up the show. <laughs> Yeah. Always. Well, life and soul of the party. Again, I, I, I'll keep my opinions on him to myself, but he's going to be uh, he's he's going to be back with us, and he's going to be revealing that uh, that semi final uh, opponent. So we don't know who that's going to be, but obviously Ruby Radley is a potential final opponent. Again, if you were to get that far, what are your thoughts on Ruby? Oh, I love to keep my eye out. I mean, she is going to be tough. If I mean, if she, if she wins that match, I'm sure her motivation to win the entire tournament is going to be through the roof, and especially to make her name in phenomenal, I suppose. So uh, yeah, I think she is going to be determined, and she is going to give it everything she's got. So do you know what? I'd like to meet her in the ring. I'm always down to go toe for toe, and you know, I like a girl that can give as good as she gets. So maybe she'll get lucky, and maybe she'll get me. Uh, you seem you seem pretty laid back, pretty confident, considering the the stakes of what's coming up for you in the, in well this show and potentially the next couple of shows if you advance. Yeah, I kind of go with, you know, if if I'm worrying, it's not really going to cause, it's not going to give give me any any good, is it really? So, I, I go into these matches confident. I know what I can do, but I don't ever go in guaranteeing I can win because that you just can't guarantee you know everyone has a bad day the dragons might be slipping I might come across someone who's a lot bigger and stronger than me that I I can't win so I go in confident because I mean you got to really haven't you if you've got no confidence in yourself then you hmm, might not get very far I don't think so yeah I, I kind of take a relaxed approach this I I, I like going to battle. I mean, it's not a stress for me. I just like to go in there, graps with some girls, even some guys, just do our thing, go to war. It's not every day that you get to go to battle. So when it does come along, I am ready. I'm like, like George and the dragons. <laughs> all right, well, uh, certainly we, we wish you and the dragons all the best for 4th of June. Uh, Stratford playing one again. We're at the Shottery Memorial Hall for Jubilee and the third and fourth quarterfinals of the Fallen Angel Championship Tournament. Mia Cortez more than ready for another chapter in her rivalry with Alfie. It's going to be magical. All right, our preview show for PEW Jubilee rolls on. And to be honest, I don't really know why our, or why we've given any airtime to our next guest because he's not part of the show in fact he's suspended from PEW he's been suspended and fined after some fairly unforgivable actions at foregone conclusion on the 30th of April but Lance Rivera has uh, requested or insisted rather on some time to uh, address that fine and suspension Mr Rivera the floor is yours or how are you going to defend the indefensible look you it's to start, to say, why are you giving air time to me? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm number one around here. I am the biggest star in PEW. So don't start saying, why are we giving air time to him? Oof. It's going to be the highest rated segment on your show. When you look at the algorithm, when this is posted, 
I am going to be the highest part of this show. People are going to be skipping to hear what I say. So let's just clear that one up straight away. And then to defend the indefensible, well, maybe Ben, the ring announcer, should have thought this through. Maybe he should have thought about this ahead of time and done his job properly. All I went to do was have a quiet word with Ben. I put my arm around him, put my hand on his chest. I was like, come here, buddy. Just open the ropes for Stacey and Chocolate Thunder. What does he do? He throws himself on the floor. He throws himself into the ropes and everyone's like, oh, my God, Lance, I can't believe you've done this. It's injustice. That's what it is. And now I'm being told that I have to apologise for Ben. Ben should be apologising to me for wasting my time and getting me suspended. You do know there's video of this, right? Which, which pretty fundamentally proves what you're saying is wrong. I've, I've seen the video. I know what it looks like. But that's, that's what's great about Ben. Clearly, he's, he knew how to play the angles. Well, look, Pete, I, I know you weren't at the show, but and for anyone who didn't see foregone conclusion, what really happened was that Lance Rivera's tag team partner, Chocolate Thunder uh, and uh, Stacey Rose, they got into the ring. And uh, Mr. Rivera decided that he would assault our ring announcer, Ben Cecil, shoved him to the floor and quite rightly got the suspension and fine uh, that he deserved. Pete, what's your, as that aside, and we'll come back to that, I promise you, in just a moment. But uh, until that moment of madness, what's been your uh, evaluation of Lance Rivera's PEW career so far? Well, yeah, hell of a talent. Um it's a shame that I'm not going to get to see him live uh, on the 4th. I was looking forward to seeing him in action once again. And, you know, those rings can get very slippy, like sweaty men and women wrestling. They can get sweaty. People can slip over. You know, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I don't want to, you know, but that's just my my take on it. And I know a thing or two about suspensions in PW. They're not afraid to throw them out. Mine probably deserved. I get why I was suspended for the last show. But um, they're not afraid to hand out these suspensions. And, you know, sometimes unfairly. You, oh, sorry, you're saying that Lance's suspension is unfair? Possibly. You know, I'm taking it him at his word. And, you know, these, uh, these ring announcers, they can be, you know, they're not as uh, athletic as some of uh, our wrestlers. So they can easily fall over. They're not meant to be in the ring at times. Unbelievable. Okay. A dangerous place, Dave. Dangerous place. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Well, look, Lance, I'm going to give you the chance since that's what you've been asked to do. And that's, that's kind of the condition of why you were allowed some airtime here. Would you like to, it sounds like you wouldn't, but I'll ask you again, would you like to take the opportunity to apologise to Ben Cecil, our ring announcer, for what you did at foregone conclusion? Look, I, I have to do what I have to do for PW and to, to keep everybody happy, even if it is a corrupt system. So from the, the, the bottom of my heart, from the deepest dwells of my, my being, my very soul, Ben, I am truly and utterly sorry, so sorry for you not being able to hold your own balance. I mean, sorry for pushing you over. I mean, great. Well, that was that was probably the most sincere apology I've ever heard. Sorry, I'm I'm welling up a bit. That that actually that touched Thank me. There. You. That's, Thank that's, you. Thank that's, you. That's nice. Well, look, before we let you go after after that heartfelt apology, what what's what is next when you do finally? get back into a PW ring. It was it was obviously a losing effort in the end against the Rebellion with, with Chocolate Thunder in that in that tag team title match. But uh, are you happy with, with the alliance you struck with him? What is next for Lance Rivera in PW? Well, as soon as I'm back in PW, as soon as that show is announced, the next show, as soon as this show is completed and finished and done, and I am no longer suspended, PW has got a... Uh, got a real talent on their hands now because I'll be coming back and it'll be like I've never ever been away and me and Chocolate Thunder we're going to be linking up once again making that tag team even stronger and you know what it's about time we get shown a bit more respect and I'm sure there's a video floating around there somewhere of uh, was maybe making a new friend out of Chase Alexander yeah what for that I mean that seemed to be some kind of encounter back in the locker room before before well after after the match and before you left the building what uh, I mean have you spoken to Chase Alexander since then what what, what on earth was that about well Stacy our manager has had plenty of contact with uh, with Chase Alexander she's been in contact with him talking about maybe a deal between the three of us 
but it's all under uh, it's all under consideration at the moment. We can't be talking about that at the moment. We can't be uh, tapping up talent, nothing like that. All right. Well, we will see. And uh, Mr. Rivera, I, I hope you uh, do learn something from your time spent at home, where you won't be at Jubilee uh, on June the fourth. And maybe just bear in mind that respect is earned rather than given. But uh, all the best to you as you as you return. We will see you in PW moving forwards. Well, thank you. I'm probably all I'm going to learn is how pretty I mean, from all the mirrors that are around the place. So, I mean, don't laugh, Pete. Don't give him the time of day. <laughs> I, I think he's funny. What, what can I say? All right. Well, we will end it there. I'm funny. Well, I'm handsome. I'm a great wrestler. I'm a full package. Yeah, he's really yeah, modest. I can see too. that. Really, really modest. And modest. Yeah. Good point, Dave. Yeah. You, say you are all right. You can make some good thank comments. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, answer there, everybody. Now, earlier on, we heard from Tyler Adams ahead of that big Jubilee street fight that's going to be taking place in Stratford-upon-Avon on June the 4th. And now his opponent in that match uh, is joining us. So a much more pleasant young man, if I do say so. Jason Joshua. Jason, welcome uh, to the preview show for Jubilee. Now, we got a lot to talk about because Tyler Adams has been far from complimentary about you. He also uh, attacked you, of course, at Kings of Combat back at the start of April. What, just before we get on to the street fight specifically, what is going on with this with this antagonism between you and him? Oh, I'll be really honest. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Um, he's come after me, like you said, at Kings of Combat. He's come after me on social media a couple of times. I, I don't know. <laughs> like... But I'm happy to resolve the issue. He's got it to this point. And maybe when I've hit him with a couple of chairs and a, a Jubilee flag, he might actually open up to what the issue is. It, it sounds, Pete, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds from what we heard from Tyler earlier that it it's something about the fact that at Kings of Combat, for example, you were included on the event poster and he wasn't, and he seems uh, some kind of ego issue where he seems to take exception to the fact that he, as he sees it, you're getting, or you have been getting opportunities before he has, and have been sort of he's been forgotten about in favour of you is the way he seems to view it. What's your response to that? It's it's a complicated one because I want everyone to have the opportunity, but I've worked hard to get the opportunity I'm now getting. I'm, I've been wrestling for five years. It didn't just happen overnight and not just uh, phenomenal. I'm, I'm working a lot more than I ever was, but I've worked for it. Tyler, honestly, it feels like he wants it handed to him and he hasn't seen the hard work I've put in. So he's coming for me instead. It is after a shortcut. Um, now, when we were speaking to Tyler, Pete, you said you thought Tyler had a very good chance of winning that match. Do you want to explain to, to Jason why you said that and what, what your thinking is? Yeah, I mean, I'm taking nothing away from Jason Joshua. You are like one of my favourite guys to watch on the shows. Like your hard-hitting offence, shall we call it, is never fa fails to entertain me. But what I was saying earlier about Tyler is like he hasn't necessarily had the opportunities that others have had. So he's got a lot to prove, hell of a lot to prove. And I think the reason he's after you is you are one of the most popular guys on the roster who is just rocketing to the top. So if he can use you as a stepping stone, if he can beat you in this uh, this street fight and prove whatever point he wants to prove, I think that's that's a that's a big win for him. And I think that's why he's targeted you in particular, because you do have this amazing connection with the crowd and you have been on on a roll since the start of PW. So I think that I think that's why he's signaling you out. He he sees you as a as a big stepping stone. I get it to a point, um, but again, I've I've worked hard for the opportunities I've been given, and he's not the only one with a lot to prove. I lost at the last show. Ad admittedly, I might not have if. Tyler had left me to deal with my own business, but I need I need to prove that I can actually follow up and do what 
I'm going to do. And unfortunately, because of Tyler's issues with me, he's going to be the person that is currently stood in my way and after June 4th won't be anymore. Could you, uh, I don't want you to reveal too much about your game plan, obviously, but it's a street fight. I know you've been saying on social media, hinting about some of the weapons you might bring with you to the party. What um, what can you tell us about what Tyler Adams has in store for him at Jubilee? I, I wanted to be mates with Tyler, but he's made it very clear it's not happening. So we're... We're going to go for it and I'm going to use whatever I can get my hands on. And I can tell you now, I'm bringing my own table and I plan on using it. You can look on my social media. I know how to use the table. All right. Well, we're going to uh, look for any other weapons you want to tell us about or is it all a surprise? I'm going to keep it a surprise and okay. get on Amazon and see what I can find. <laughs> go down B and Q. See if you can yeah. Yeah, see what there is. Well, uh, I'm looking forward to the surprise. If I was Tyler Adams, I think maybe I wouldn't be uh, quite quite so excited about uh, revealing what, what that surprise is. But um, Pete, any final thoughts on this? We've heard from both men in this street fight now. Yeah, no, I, I think this is a big match. I mean, street fights aren't booked willy-nilly on wrestling shows. They're, they're big matches. They're big stakes. I mean, this could shorten either man's career. Uh, and I think we've seen from both, both these competitors that neither one's going in taking it lightly. Uh, so it, it's one of the, the big matches of the show. Like I say, street fights don't happen all that often, nor should they. They're not pretty. Um, this is going to be one hell of a matchup. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, Jason, we'll give you the final word. Any any final message you'd like to send to Tyler Adams before you face him across the ring in Stratford? I think Tyler thinks I don't see him as a threat. And I do. And I'll be going into this match 100% concentrated and I'll be doing everything I can because I know whether he wants to try and accuse me of this, that and the other, I know he's got the talent, I know he's got the ability, I know he's a threat, but I will be pinning him in a street fight in two weeks' time. All right, well, one way or another, we will see... Uh, how that unfolds, Jason Joshua. The very best of luck to you. Uh, the Jubilee Street Fight coming up, just as you said, in just a few days' time now, uh, June the 4th in Stratford upon Avon. I think one of the great things about PEW that's already emerged is the strength of our women's division. You're seeing that in the, in the Fallen Angel Championship tournament, which we've already talked about. We've also got a couple of other women's matches coming up uh, on Jubilee on uh, June the 4th. Let's talk about uh, those. We've got a pre-show match, which is going to be interesting. Ruby Radley, Pete, who we've already discussed, who's going to later in the evening find out who her new semi-final opponent is in that full yeah. tournament. Uh, earlier in the pre-show, is going to be in, in a match against Leah Raven, who joined me on commentary when you were absent at Foregone. Right. Uh, Harley Harris and Aluna Blue. Um, it's important for Ruby Radley, presumably... Uh, to maintain her momentum as she heads towards that semi-final. Most definitely, yeah. And, you know, these, these pre-show matches, they're just as important as, like, matches on the main stage. This is where you can really prove yourself. Uh, fans need to get there early to make sure you get actually catch this match before the main show starts. But, yeah, having this warm-up as such, um, she's got a lot to prove. I mean, a loss in that match could mean, you know, negative feelings going into the tournament. So, yeah, she, she has a work cut out for her in that one. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We'll see how that pans out. But the, the match I want to spend a bit more time on now is one that I'm not sure if it's... A, I don't know how to phrase it. I don't know if it was a good piece of judgment by Harley Hudson. Uh, I like Harley Hudson a lot. She joined us on commentary while she was still injured on, on our um, first show, Brave New World, back in February, back in the ring uh, at Kings of Combat, where she became the number one contender um, for the PEW women's title and then narrowly uh, failed in that, in that effort. Uh, in a three-way match against champion Aurora Tevez and Rio uh, at foregone conclusion. But in the process, I think uh, lots of people will be talking about Harley Hudson as one of the top talents, male or female, in the country, if not in across European wrestling right now. She's one of the real up-and-coming stars. Yeah. Um, but you've got to be careful when you're an up-and-coming star, right? You've got to pick mm -hmm. your tools, uh, and make sure that you're, you know, you're, the momentum you're building, that reputation that you're starting to develop hasn't been doesn't get short-circuited before it's able to really 
come alive. And I wonder, by agreeing to a match against Laurie, whether she might have just bitten off a little bit more than she can chew, or am I not giving Harley Hudson enough credit? No, I, I agree. I mean, when Harley was on commentary with her, she was not shy about coming forward about one in the face, Laurie. And we've seen how dominant Laurie is, not just against the uh, other women in the uh, company, but in the men as well, when she was dominating in that rumble. Um, she is hell of a competitor, hell of an athlete. You know, Harley is um, deceptively strong. You know, you look at her, you think she's, you know, not as big as some of the women in the division, but she is so, so strong. Um and she's coming back from this injury as well. So she's got stuff to prove. Yeah, maybe Laurie's not the person you want to go up against when you're coming back from uh, a serious injury um, because she will do you some damage without even thinking twice about it. But this is hell of a match. Big, big match. Like I say, Harley was uh, very keen to get in the ring with Laurie and she's got her wish. Uh, whether that's a clever wish, I don't know. But yeah, big, big match for her. Last time we saw Laurie was on our first show in February, mm. a, a two-on-one handicap match against uh, Alfie and Mia Cortez, who we talked to a little bit earlier on. Um, and then, of course, the same show, Laurie then appeared again in the Golden Ticket Rumble match, yeah, win the match. But it took quite a lot of people to eliminate her, and she was pretty pretty dominant for a long period there. So yeah, she's someone who is, uh, you know, she could just tear up tear people apart. Ninety percent of her opponents. Uh, could have, you know, could end up in the hospital, let alone lose the match. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you're Harley Hudson, you're obviously giving up quite a lot in the way of size to her. Um, for all of the positive attention that Harley Hudson has, has been gaining, as I say, it's very important to her that she doesn't lose. And she certainly, certainly that she doesn't get decimated here by, by Laurie. So what's the, what's the plan? If you're Harley, why do you think she agreed to the match, first of all? I mean, we Harley's got so much buzz about it. You mentioned that earlier. And you're only going to get better by wrestling the best. And Laurie is one of the best that, not just the UK, that the world has to offer. She's a, a veteran of uh, wrestling. She's been around for a long time. She's wrestled them all. And by Harley agreeing and wanting this match, not even agreeing to it, she was very adamant she wanted this match. That is hell of a, a win if she can get it. If she can uh, take down Laurie, that will sort of avenge that loss for the title. Even though Harley did lose that match, she's still on a roll for coming back from this injury. She's had some massive wins, uh, not just in PW, all around the country. So, yeah, this is probably the biggest match she's had, maybe not just since her injury, but ever. Uh, it's a match she wants, and she's got so much to prove in it. Um, and, I, yeah, I think even a really good showing against Laurie, uh, proving that you're not afraid to back, you're not going to back down, you're going to go in there, fight as hard as you can. Yeah, it's 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 a big proving ground uh, for Harley. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see it. Do you think there's a little bit of a sense of deflation for Harley Hudson? Again, I know you went out for one conclusion, but, for, you know, again, because of all that buzz around her, when she won the number one contendership match, we were there for at Kings of Combat. Lots of talk, oh, Harley Hudson, you know, could could now go on to beat Aurora Tevez and, and you know, then go on to be the women's champion for a, a very long time. Now, granted... She didn't, in the end, get the one-on-one -on -one match that she wanted because our, our general manager, Jesse Maria, saw fit to add Rhea yeah. to the contest and make, and make it a three-way. So Hudson hasn't necessarily had that one-on-one -on -one moment with the champion where they've been able to decisively prove without an extra dynamic in there who is the better wrestler. But nonetheless, she had a title shot and she didn't leave as champion. Um, and, and so I wonder whether she's... It's almost like... I worry that she's trying to compensate for that by doing something bigger and better, you know, going, right, you know what, I'm going to prove that I, I still deserve to be considered as, as a contender and, and as a potential champion by taking on someone who no one thinks I can be. In mm. uh, and, I, and I get the logic, but it seems high risk. It is. It's, it's very much that. And, you know, losing any match is deflating. It's disappointing. Losing a championship match is even worse. You know, you wake up that next day and you want to wake up next to that title belt. And when it's not there, you do, you question yourself and you're like, am I good enough? Am I good enough to be the, the best that this business has to offer? And yeah, I, I get why wrestling Laurie and hopefully, you know, she wants to beat Laurie. That is the thing that will get her momentum back. Has she bitten off more than she can chew? Quite possibly. You know, I, I wouldn't want to get in the ring against Laurie, let alone, you know, anyone else. She is a powerhouse she's dominating she's not afraid of anyone uh, male or female in that ring she will go in there 
to prove her point, you know, and Laurie's going to be wanting to go for that championship as well. If you're not in the wrestling business to win titles, then you don't need to be in there. So yeah, she wants, is going to want to prove that she's still got a lot in the tank and that she can represent the company as champion. So yeah, both these uh, ladies have got, you know, uh, big things they see in their futures uh, and they're going to have to step on each other to get there. So yeah, it, it's, it could go either way. I think, you know, I don't, uh, count Harley out at all, but beating Laurie is probably the toughest uh, toughest test she's had yet. All right, well, we will see. It's all going to go down 4th of June at PEW Jubilee Shot Dream Memorial Hall, Stratford upon Avon, Laurie against Harley Hudson. Another one of the many, many reasons that you need to pay attention to Jubilee uh, on June the 4th. Well, throughout this preview show, we've been talking about how some of these matches at PEW Jubilee really are high stakes. But for one young man, they really don't come any higher because for Rye, the sound guy, it is feast or famine, make or break. He either has a contract or he will never be seen in a PEW ring again. He's going to compete against the man who, against the odds, he was a co-tag team champion with the first tag team champions in PEW history. It was unfortunately a very short-lived union. Uh, Pete, you have uh, a, quite a role in this uh, sorry story as well, so we'll talk to Seems you. Seems so, yeah. Uh, but, but Rai, first of all, uh, how are you feeling? Obviously, you're the underdog. Most people saying you haven't got a chance that it was crazy for you to uh, agree to this, this stipulation. What's your response to those people? Uh, to, those, to those people, to those people who don't who doubt me who don't think i have it in me and for a lot of people they don't know who i am they don't know where i've come from i've been training to be a professional wrestler for six years of my life since i was 13 years old i am 19 years old since i was 13 years old i've been training and i i know i'm not the most amazing in the ring i'm no martin kirby i'm no jim diehard but what I have a lot of is a lot of fight and a lot of spirit. And I am not going to let the prestige take advantage of my opportunity to get a contract in PW. Now, Pete, I want to bring you in on that. We'll talk a bit more here, Pete. We haven't really talked very much about what happened between you and the prestige. Uh, mm. things of combat that caused you to miss foregone conclusion. And we'll get there in a second. But just in terms of what the Prestige did to Rye. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, first his tag team partner, then when they lost those titles to the Rebellion, blaming him and, and assaulting him after the bell. It was only after you intervened that that assault stopped. Um, the uh, the sort of the torture of Rye, I can call it that, kind of went on at foregone conclusion as well. So before we get into the details of it, just why? You've known the Prestige a long time. You were involved in his training early on. Mm -hmm. What is it in his personality? Is, is it insecurity? Why is it that he feels the need to prove a point against, and, and no offence to you, right, but against the sound guy? This is what confuses me, to be honest. I mean, you know, when I'm on commentary, I like to have a bit of fun. I like to go against the grain. But this is, this is different because this is personal for me. And, you know, you did mention I had a hand in training the prestige all those years ago when he was a young kid coming to my school and wanting to get into the business. And he was a respectful kid. You know, he wanted to learn. He wanted to be the best he could be. And the prestige I see now, I don't recognize it. I, it it's come out of nowhere for me. Even that first show where they won the tag titles, it was like, yeah, this is a great feel good moment. Finally, he's, he's, you know, getting his dues. He, he's making a name for himself in the business, but yeah, strange. Yeah. I mean, I just wonder whether there is some kind of need. And you mentioned the word respect there. I wonder mm. whether is that somewhere, some twisted logic in his brain that that's what this is, that that's what this is all about, that he feels he's not getting enough respect from the PEW fans and from the other wrestlers in the locker room for his role in bringing PEW to life. And, you know, to him, the personification of that is the fact that this, this new guy, Rye, the sound guy, it was has been getting louder reactions or was getting louder reactions than he was when they were a team. Possibly. I mean, it was a long time ago. 
the uh, prestige came into my school he mentioned it at the last show I, I saw the promo i saw him speaking um he he's taken him a long time to get to this point where he's having matches where he's he's winning championships it, that comes quicker to some people and it hasn't for him it's it's taken him a long time it's been like 15 years since he first stepped through my doors to finally get a title and to lose it so quickly yeah maybe it's eating him up but it looks like we've lost Rye. I think he's maybe having some uh, connection issues, but maybe it's better he doesn't hear what we're about to say anyway. <laughs> I do wonder, um, based on what you've said about how, you know, the mentality of, of the prestige, um, he hasn't really got a chance, has he? You know, I know that there's this kind of, everyone's going to be cheering him on. There's that kind of hope for a fairy tale ending for him and that he can be, essentially, I know he said he's been training as a wrestler, but he is essentially the sound guy. Uh, mm-hmm. A wrestler contract against a vastly more experienced opponent and someone who is, let's face it, insecure, twisted, whatever you want to call it, but is determined to inflict pain and misery on this young man. Yeah. To see a happy ending, isn't it? You know me. Normally, I'd be sitting here going, he has no chance. You know, he's had his time in the sun. He's gone. But this is this is different for me. It sits differently for me. I've got this, this personal thing going on with this match. And the prestige, he's like, I hung my boots up a long time ago. I, I haven't wrestled for a while. None of the guys I used to wrestle with wrestle. So the prestige is like the last connection I kind of have to my old life in wrestling. And I was so excited to see him do well. And now he's turned into what he's turned into. I think that could be his undoing. And I think that's all Ryan needs. He just needs that chance. And yeah, he's he's no slouch in the ring. We've yeah, he hasn't <laughs> fared all that well since winning the tag titles, but he keeps getting up. You know, he he took a pounding from Jim Diehard and he still got up and he, you know, he challenged uh, prestige to this match. So he has nothing to lose. And you know, a man with nothing to lose has everything to gain. Um, I he's got as good a chance as he's ever had. Um, and it'll be Prestige's own hubris that will be his undoing, I think. Well, we'll find out. Will the miracle happen? Can there be a miracle in Stratford-upon-Avon? We'll find out on June the 4th at PEW at Jubilee. It is Rye the sound guy against the Prestige. If Rye wins PEW contract, if he loses, he will never be seen PEW ring again. Indeed. All right, well, we've had a pretty interesting night here on our PEW Jubilee preview show. We've had some uh, fascinating comments from some of the wrestlers who are going to be competing on the show on June the 4th. Uh, We've got two matches still to talk about, and both of them involve this new faction that seems to have formed people. You weren't here when all of this went down. I wasn't, no, yeah. Foregone conclusion, but um, there is a new force in town in PEW. Their name is the Entitled News. Uh, broke of their forming together shortly after it happened all across social media made made waves across the the wrestling world uh, and one of the gentlemen who made those waves is joining us now he is riley nova part of the entitled one thing he is not though and i should emphasize this given what he has chosen to uh, put in frame with him here is he is not a pew tag team champion he and brady phillips uh, have, well, let's call it what it is. He's stolen the belts from the Rebellion, who are the tag team champions. Do you want to start, Mr. Nova, by explaining why? Uh, but I'm going to cut you off before you even finish. Of course, I'm going to start. And the first thing I want you to do is rephrase that entire thing, because every time we post anything on socials at the minute with these belts, everyone's saying, oh, you're not the rightful champions, just to let everyone know you're not the champions. And I just don't get it. We are literally sat here with the championships, and we are not the champions. I literally don't know what more we need to do. We are the tag team champions. If you if you stole my car, would you be the owner of my car? Yes, because I would have your car. I would then own that car. I but you're not the rightful owner. You wouldn't be the rightful owner, would you? It doesn't matter if it's rightful or not. It's my car. Well, what, you can do no car. Um, well, that, I'm going to drive it. Where are you? You see my point. It is the you you you've taken those tag team championships without winning them uh, in a wrestling match. So so okay, you know I know you take issue with people saying you're not the rightful champions. So whether you are or not, can you explain why you did it? I think the situation sort of speaks for itself. Like, myself and Brady Phillips weren't even booked on that show. We only came down because we got a call from Kirby. We sat there watching the show and watching the tag team match, and we sort of said to each other, like, 
there's some good tag teams going on here. Like there's some good wrestlers, but we're good wrestlers. We're the best wrestlers. How can we're not on the show? How can we're not the champions? That's what we said. So we took it upon ourselves to beat up the champions and take away their championships, therefore making us the tag team champions. Pete, I don't know what you think of this listening to all of it. Again, you, you weren't there in person, but I'm sure you've seen the footage since. I mean, mm -hmm. the fact that this group, and we'll talk about the members of the group in a bit more detail in a second, but the fact that they're calling themselves the Entitled, I think seems a pretty apt name based on what on what Riley Nova is, seeing, is, is saying here, because it sounds like they think that they're just entitled to be handed all of the gold. What's your take on, on, on this formation of, of the Entitled and, and the theft of the, the tag team title belts? Well, I've been in and around this business for kind of 20 years. And one thing I've learned in my time is, is it won't give you anything. The wrestling business will not give you anything. You have to take your spots. You have to take what you want from it. And I, I totally get why they did what they did. They want to prove Pete a point. They it. want to prove that they're the best. Be more like Pete. Pete gets it. Be more like Pete. Yeah, they I want to like prove that. they're the best. They've got the title belts there to prove it. And, you know, it's, it's up to the Rebellion now to, to get them back. Can they do it? I don't know. No. All right. Well, look, I mean, you're going to be uh, in action in an actual sanctioned wrestling match uh, at, at Jubilee. It's going to be a six-person tag match where you will be teaming with, with Brady Phillips, who's your uh, apparently your the, the person you believe is your co-tag team champion, and Ivy, another part of the entitled. You're going to be going up against a pretty formidable team, though, uh, in the rightful PEW women's champion, Aurora Tevez, Big Guns Joe, and the veteran legend of the British scene, James Mason. So in terms of actual first in-ring outings for the entitled, it, it's a pretty tricky one, isn't it? I mean, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Every person in that match is a superstar, including us. But we don't shy away from a challenge, and you can see that right here with this championship. And when we see those icons and stars of the British scene across from us, we don't see anything to be afraid of, anyone that's going to beat us. All we see are names to make our names off of. If we can pin Big Guns Joe or James Mason, what does that mean for us? All right, and so and so you're obviously it sounds like you're pretty confident that you're going to make pretty short work of of your opponents on on. I never said it'll be short work, but we're definitely going to win. Uh, Pete, we've seen we've we've spoken to some people who all seem pretty confident, and I Riley Nova may be the most confident of them all here. I mean, I, mean, uh, mm -hmm. I suppose he has backup. Right, he, uh, he has strength in numbers. So, do you think the entitled are going to be able to achieve what they clear clearly their intention is, which is to become the dominant force in all of PEW? Well, that's the thing that the entitled have that their opponents don't have. The entitled are a cohesive unit. They're talking every day. They came together for the same reasons. They've got that bond already that this other team they don't have. That they're just a mishmash of other wrestlers. But they don't talk. They'll see each other at the show, have a little chat. But yeah. The entitled are talking constantly, and especially with Kirby, the world champion, you know, at the helm. You know, how can they lose? They're, they're a cohesive, solid unit, and I, I can't wait to see them in action. Really excited for it. Now, there is another match involving uh, the entitled in, in uh, at Jubilee. In fact, it's our PW World Championship match. The leader of your group, Riley, is Martin Kirby, and he's going to be defending the world title against Encereco. Um, Now, we saw Kirby defending the title against Joe Lando at foregone conclusion. And unfortunately, you and several other members of the entitled chose to get involved. Can you make us a promise, a guarantee right now on this on this program, this preview show in front of all the PEW fans that you guys will let it be a one on one fair match between Kirby and Ensoreco for the PEW world title at Jubilee? I can promise both you, the fans, and all of the powers that be on the day that that will be a singles match for the championship containing the, only the two wrestlers and the referee in that ring. We will be nowhere to be seen. I give you my word. All right. Well, that's pretty clear. And I guess we will judge you with, based on whether your actions uh, match your words. Before you go, what's the... Uh, what is what is it that the entitled wants other than all of the championship gold? What what is the point that you are trying to prove? Like you've hinted at it, but it'd be good to hear a clear mission statement from you guys. 
again, I think our actions speak louder than our words. We want every single championship. We want to be every single star and prove that out of all the stars on that show, that we are the best of the bunch, which we are. Well, we will see. Uh, Riley Nova, thank you very much for joining us. Obviously, we uh, wish you all the best in your six-person tag team match at Jubilee. Make sure you bring that tag title belt with you and hopefully we can return it to its rightful owner. Uh, first of all, we'll think about it. And second of all, it's with its rightful owner, but thank you anyway. All right, well, we'll see you at Jubilee June 4th. Yes, you will. Yeah, see you on the fourth, champ. See you later, mate. Well, there you have it. Uh, what a night of action we're going to have in Stratford-upon-Avon on June the 4th for Jubilee. Uh, Pete, you've heard from a lot of the PEW roster uh, here on this show, various uh, about their thoughts of uh, the, the big matches they've got coming up on that show. Did anyone stand out in particular to you in, ter in terms of where they are mentally headed into this? I think Tyler Adams. I'm, I'm excited to see him finally get his chance to, uh, to prove what he's been telling everyone that he is, that he is a marquee player, that he deserves to be on the posters, deserves to be on the show's uh, he's got a lot to prove. Um, obviously, Rai, you've you've got to appreciate the story that he's been through so far, and hopefully it can have that happy ending. But yeah, every match just seems like a marquee match for Jubilee, something that Queen Liz is obviously going to be watching. It's in her honour, so it, it deserves a, a big a big event. It'll be the highlight of a, of a Jubilee weekend, I'm sure. But, no doubt. Uh, it could be the highlight of yours as well. Tickets still available to join us in the Shottery Memorial Hall. On June the 4th, you can uh, find out more information on PEW's Twitter page. That's twitter.com forward slash PEW underscore wrestling. All the ticket information uh, that you need for uh, is, is available for you there. Uh, Pete, it's been a pleasure. Uh, we don't always agree, but you're always a uh, thoroughly good company. So uh, looking forward to having you back at the commentary table. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. You believe it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, thanks for joining me tonight, Pete. And uh, thanks to all of you for joining us as well. I've been Dave Bradshaw, and we will see you June the 4th at Phenomenal Elite Wrestling Jubilee. See you there.